Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on UI UX. Do you know friends that UI UX designing is in high demand these days since the end consumers have plethora of goods and application that perform the same thing. The only thing that distinguishes them is their user interface and user experience. So when it comes to the future of UI UX designing, it is a lot of potential and scope. Watch this video till the end to learn more about UI UX. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates. So let's start with introduction to UI UX. The term user interface or user experience is a basically user first design related term, a basically a technique of developing digital products with the user in mind. To put it in another way, basically the goal of UI UX design is to develop a product that is both visually beautiful and enjoyable to use. UX design as compared to the UI design is basically a workflow design, which is not only creating a solution customized as per as needs, but also taking care of the organization's branding and usability. Now, the question comes up in your mind, what is basically UI? Basically, it is the design process that is used to create user interfaces in the software or electronic devices with a focus on aesthetics or style is known as the user interface design. Designers basically strive to produce user-friendly and enjoyable interfaces. Graphical user interface and other types such as voice control interfaces are referred to as UI design. The point of access through which users engage with designs is also called as user interfaces. So basically, there are three types of user interface available. The first one is GUI interfaces. Basically, in the graphical user interfaces, users interact with the visual representations on the digital control panels using graphical user interfaces. The desktop of a computer is kind of a GUI. The next one is voice controlled user interfaces. So basically, when designing the UIs, users evaluate the designs rapidly and are concerned with their likability and usability. They are more concerned with completing their tasks quickly and efficiently than they are with your design. Therefore, your design should be invisible. Users should concentrate on finishing tasks rather than on it, such as ordering pizza using the Domino's Zero Click app. These are the few kinds of the example. Therefore, to perfect the greatest and the most intuitive UIs that give seamless experiences to understand the context and the task flows of your users, which you can obtain via, for example, customer journey maps is very useful. UIs are ought to be pleasant as well as or at least satisfying and frustration free. Your design may provide people with more individualized and engaging experiences when it anticipates their needs. If you delight them, they will keep coming back. Where suitable gamification components can add extra enjoyment to your design also. User interface should convey brand values and increase user confidence. Emotional design is also considered as a good design. Users have positive views about businesses that connect with them on all levels and maintain the charm of enjoyable, seamless encounters. Now, the question comes up, how to build UIs? The goal of user interface design is to foresee that user would need to do and make sure that the interface has parts that are simple for use, access and comprehend. Information architecture, interaction design and graphic design ideas are all combined in the UIs. Now, if I talk about the first one, it says that user interface design is basically concerned with anticipating what users may need to do and ensuring that the interface contains features that are simple to access, understand and utilize in order to assist those actions. Interaction design or graphic design and information architecture are all combined in the UIs. Now, we will see the first component that is choosing the interface elements. Now, if I say about selecting the interface components, you have to try to be consistent and predictable in your choices because users have grown accustomed to specific interface components behaving in a certain way. Task completion, efficiency and satisfaction 
will all benefit from doing this. A few examples of interface components are, for example, such as buttons, text fields, check boxes, radio buttons, drop down menus, list boxes, toggles, and date fields are all examples of the input control. Breadcrumb, sliders, search field, pagination, slider, tags, and icons are some of the examples of the navigational elements. And if I talk about the containers, such as tooltips, icons, progress bars, notification, message boxes, and model windows are examples of the informational components. So basically, you can see we have talked about the three informational components, such as your first, input controls, second, navigational components, and third is the informational components, which includes in choosing the interface elements. Now, there are certain instances where using numerous elements to display the content may be suitable. When it occurs, it's crucial to take the trade-offs into the account. For instance, there are occasions when items that can help your save space instead place greater mental strain on the user by making them guess what is a drop-down menu or what the element might be. So there are certain design principles associated which simplify your usability of your UI. The graphic design is basically the craft where professionals create visual content to communicate the messages. By applying visual hierarchy and page layout techniques, designers use typography and pictures to meet the user's specific needs and focus on the logic of displaying elements in the interactive design to optimize the user experience. Knowing your user is the foundation for anything. This includes comprehending their objectives, capacities, tastes, and tendencies when creating your interface after learning more about your user. Be sure to take the following design principles into your account, which I have discussed you right now. Now, next comes the balance. This refers basically to the distribution of graphic design elements such as shapes, text boxes, and images of a design evenly throughout a certain layout. Designers can choose between a balanced, which is a stable design, or an off-balance, which is basically a dynamic layout. So basically, in the context of graphic design, balances can be considered of three types. Now, the best user interfaces, which are basically essentially undetectable, they steer away the superfluous parts and utilize straightforward language on labels and messages. So this you can consider the balance of the UI which you are creating it. And one thing can be put into the note that the page layout should also have a purpose. Structure the page according to the relevance while taking into account the spatial relationships between the elements on it. The most crucial pieces of information which can be highlighted with careful positioning which can also improve scalability and readability. Make thoughtful use of texture and color. Use color, light, contrast, and texture to your advantage to draw attention to divert it from the objects. Create hierarchy with clarity with the typography. Think very carefully about how you will employ the typography. Text should be presented in variety of sizes, fonts, and arrangements to improve readability, scannability, and legibility. Ensure that the system conveys what is occurring. Always alert your users to their location, action, status changes, and faults. Your user annoyance can also be decreased by using different UI components to indicate status if necessary. The next one can be considering the defaults. You may design defaults that ease your user's burden by carefully considering and anticipating the goals visitors bring to your website. When it comes to form design, where you can have the option to have some fields pre-selected or filled out, this becomes very crucial. Now, if I talk about and sum the conclusion about balance, so in order to achieve the coherence, completion, and satisfaction in design, the visual weight of the pieces must be harmonized with another on the all side of work. This basically depicts what the balance is trying to say from your user interface. Your composition should be balanced vertically, horizontally, diagonally, or between the backdrop and the foreground 
to obtain the best balance. Now we will see about alignment. So basically if I talk about alignment, it is a fundamental aspect of a design which creates a visual connection between elements such as images, shapes or blocks of text. So basically alignment helps to develop a sharp and ordered appearance by eliminating any distortion within the layout that can have a strong impact on the users. Aligning elements make the design basically more organized and aesthetically pleasing. However, despite being a core teammate of the UI design, the user might not always be aware of it. The idea of alignment in the UI is fundamentally characterized by its capacity to be invisible. It is a back-end procedure designed to control the minute aspects of each components of a digital product. However, if we contrast two interfaces, one successfully aligned and the other not aligned properly, we can see the difference right away. So basically, if I want to sum up what alignment means in the user interface scenario, it represents basically the scale of each element by comparing their proportion and focusing on the elements. The next thing is contrast. Generally speaking, the term contrast refers to the things that stand out sharply from one and another. Contrast, when referring to visual perception, is essentially connected to the difference in color or light that makes it possible to discern an item clearly. But what makes a contrast so crucial? Because the contrast is usually noticed by the human eye. The contrast ratio or dynamic range of an image is its maximum possible contrast. Additionally, for those with vision impairments like color blindness who have poor vision, contrast become the key feature of the objects that helps them to distinguish. So one of the primary design elements affecting the scannability and visual hierarchy of a web page or a smartphone screen is the contrast. It enables the designer to communicate consumers which points the interaction are essential and which are also optional while presenting the layout. Contrast plays a significant role in promoting the natural navigation and usability of a digital product since it is effective and grabbing the user's attention and drawing it to the certain parts. The arrangement of the design elements of the page such that the eye are led to each of the design feature in order of the intended importance makes it helpful for applying the contrast. Now we will study about the visual hierarchy. So basically hierarchy is a method that combines two aspects, dominance and priority giving extra weight to certain elements of a design over the others. It helps brands convey their messages to the audience by focusing on a particular element of the design. So you can make a visual hierarchy by using the following. Contrast and color, grouping by scale, proximity in the common regions. Now we will study about the next component that is rhythm. So basically rhythm brings two different elements to create a more organized and consistent look. Repetition of certain elements such as logos or color can help make a brand easily recognizable and strengthen the overall look. So you can see in the picture here, we have repetition, we have pattern and we have the following rhythm. So you can see the following rhythm gives a very consistent look to the user interface. A composition's rate of flow which can be influenced by the rhythm which is patterned is movement. Just as your ear following along with the rhythm of a song, your eye will follow the rhythm made visually. Rhythmic patterns are built using the elements and intervals between them. As soon as you include several items on a page and a pattern and a rhythm will start to emerge. Anything with two indicates a structure. Again, you should learn to regulate it because it will always be there regardless of what you do. Now, through the use of repeated elements, the repetition generates flow and rhythm. The eye searches for a pattern in the composition after spotting a red circle and looks for more red circle there as well. Alteration and gradation are two further techniques for creating rhythm in addition to repetition. If we talk about the repetition, it establishes the predictable patterns. And on the other hand, 
Alternation uses contrasting couples to generate the patterns. And third is gradation, which is a sequence of predictable steps that produces the pattern. Now, if I want to sum up about the rhythm contributing in building the UI, it means something that the elements that the eye follows and the gaps between them also contribute to the creation of rhythm. Any modification would change the pattern. Pattern variations keep things interesting. Emphasis on one aspect of the pattern might cause the rhythm to change and flow to momentarily stop. Now, we will see the next component that is proximity. If I talk about the proximity, it helps in decluttering the overall design by creating a relationship between the related elements. It forms a visual connection among the important design factors such as color, font, type or size, ensuring the layout is balanced to form a perfect design. It enables the audience to have a pleasant overview of what they are looking at, thus thereby offering a good user experience. So basically, Proximity is one of the most crucial grouping concepts, which can outweigh other visual clues like similar in color or shape. Almost everywhere in UI design, relevant components are grouped together while unrelated elements are separated. While creating flexible layouts, paying attention to the closeness of item is especially crucial because these groups may alter as they adjust to different screen sizes. Thus, by reducing the distance between the parts or by trying to pushing them far away, scaling down to smaller devices can ruin grouping connections. Now next, we will study about color and space. Choosing the right color can also help to define the tone of the design. Designers can choose from a wide range of color combinations for the background and text of the layout. Space refers to the area around between the various elements of the design. So this overall refers to the color and space. So choosing the right color is very important to define the tone of your design while building your user interface. Now we will see the next very important component in building the UI that is the wireframes. So what is basically a wireframe? Wireframe is an interface visual representation which is used to explain an interface structure, content, information, hierarchy, functionality and behavior. It is a two-dimensional representation of an app or a website's basic structure. The layout, information architecture, user flow, functionality and expected behaviors are all clearly outlined in the wireframes. Style, color and graphics are generally reduced to a minimum in wireframes because they typically represent the initial product concept. Depending on how much detail is needed, wireframes can be produced digitally or by hand. The most frequent users of wireframing are UX designers. Before the developers begin writing the code for the interface, this approach enables all stakeholders to agree on where the information will be placed. So wireframing is very important component in building the UI. But the question comes up, why do we need wireframes or why to use wireframes? Wireframes are actually very useful for a variety of things, including connecting the site's information architecture to the visual design by displaying the routes between the pages and also clarifying how specific type of information should be shown to the user interface in a consistent manner. Determine the interface intended functionality can also be very helpful when using the wireframes. So let me show you an example of a wireframe. So you can see a website all over here. So before you design a, basically a website, you need wireframe where you can place your things like what things you need to place in a website, what information need to be added at what place. So wireframes is kind of very crucial. So in the wireframes, you can see as here, there will be structure. So suppose you can ask a question, how many components of a website will they assemble? or the content, what will be shown in the website, or what is the information hierarchy, how data will be arranged and presented, what will be the functionality of the website, how will the user interface function, and finally, what is the behavior, what kind of interaction does it have with the user, or what is its behavior like. So basically wireframes helps us to answer these questions and align these things so that when we are creating a website, 
we can easily put it all together. So you can see all over here, there are sketches of the wireframe here. So suppose here it's saying, what is it? It's the main body, what's the color, pages, format, stocks, basically cancel, next. So everything which you are putting in a rough format so that you are answering the questions which I told you earlier, okay? So that helps us in creating a wireframe and its use cases are very important in building an interesting UI. Now, the next thing that comes up in building the UI is prototyping. So what is a prototype? Prototype is an early sample or model of a release of a product build to test a concept or a process. So basically, it is a term used in variety of contexts, including semantics, design, electronics, and software programming. A prototype is generally used to evaluate a new design. It basically helps you to take a concept and present it to the users so that you can get a detailed feedback and continue to improve the product or service. Prototypes by definition should not aim for perfection. Instead, they serve a crude representation of a solution idea. Now, we will study the final thing in building a UI that is MVP. So what is an MVP? Basically, MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product. Designers who are working in the startup environments will need to understand the concept of the MVP. It's an optimum position for a product to reach its launch as it attempts to reduce risk for investors while still delivering a product that will prosper on the open market. The concept is simple. To release a product with the fewest features feasible and ship it as soon as possible. So you can see in the graph, we have the user-centric analysis, synthesis, ideation, and design. Then the graph shows it increases linearly to its threshold point where the concept, so the area under this part shows that which is the time needed by the designer in building and understanding the empathy. And then you can see the curve is going decreasing, you know, constantly, which shows that this time is required as synthesis, where define the key journeys, problem, pain points, and then it's gonna go to null. And then again, here the stakeholder alignment will happen. Now there will be a very steep increase where the process will be called as ideation where we will ideate, prototype, and user test. And which shows the solving the problem in a right way. And finally, there will be a deceleration, which you can see the graph is constantly coming down with the time, which is called as design and implementation, and your MVP, the minimum viable product, will be built. So this was all in building the MVP. Now, we will study about what is UX. So what exactly is user experience? So basically, user experience is the design methodology that employs to produce products that offers customers meaningful and pertinent experiences is known as user experience. UX design includes components of branding, design, usability, and function in the design of full process of obtaining and integrating the product. Making software simple to use is just one aspect of the experience design. Other experiences associated to the product, such as making the strategy, the packaging, and the post-purchase assistance are also designed. The primary goal of the UX design is to provide solutions that meet the needs and the pain areas. Nobody will utilize a product that has no utility after all. Additional crucial UX information that you should be aware of is that user experience is concerned with how user feels and thinks. Humans have both cognitive and emotional sides, and both influence how consumers view a product. The environment in which a product is used affects the user experience as well. You need to comprehend this context as well in order to build a fantastic product. Understanding how product affects the aspects of people's life is very crucial. The way a consumer interacts with your product could evolve over the time. A new product may cause people to feel conflicted emotions when they first start using it. However, they could quickly change their thought as they have more experience with it. So basically, UX design, to put it simply, it is the process of developing useful and usable goods, whether they will be digital or real. 
usable if I talk about it means that the product must be straightforward simple to use and well known useful it means that an item needs to satisfy a need there isn't really a purpose for people to use a product if it doesn't address a perceived needs in their lives desirable it means that the product's visual appeal must be alluring and inspire good feelings findable a user should be able to easily locate a solution if they run to an issue with the product accessible the good or service that must be used by people of all abilities including those who have disabilities and credible which means that the business and its goods must be reliable so these all compromise what basically is a user experience now as you can see in this picture you can see a person walking on a lane and there it is written as user experience and there is an empty lane which is referred to as design so basically they offer a variety of user experiences what does this line convey in the perfect condition the dirt path is a shorter and a more enjoyable option when it's pouring and you don't want to leap through a mud puddles and concrete walkway is a perfect option but this image is kind of very deceiving this is just not what in ux is and for no apparent reasons pits design and ux against each other even worse it smokes and places ux in a superior position to design so in the ux experience process people use design process as a method and a tool set and a verb to create various user experiences and the next is that ux is a desired outcome based on your aesthetics requirements and so on and design is a method and ux is a desirable outcome based on the user research heuristics and so on additional crucial ux information that you should be aware of is as follows user experience is basically concerned with how users feel and think humans have both cognitive and emotional sides that must be considered very well so there are certain points which should be kept in mind while defining and talking about the ux design ux design encompasses just more than usability we can tell whether consumers can execute tasks successfully and quickly by evaluating a product's usability good usability is a prerequisite for good user experience usability is only just one quantity of a successful user experience though usability aids in the development of useful products but simply because something is simple to use doesn't mean that user will really utilize it creating a successful ux design process is essential to accomplish any of the digital project whether you are creating a saas application website game or any other digital product so basically you can see the venn diagram all over here so which says that there is a interaction design there is a visual design and the mapped area is ui above that is a user experience which encompasses interaction design and the visual design then you get the architecture you have certain content there is a sound design human computer interaction and human factor so i hope so this diagram would give you an overall view what exactly is user experience now we will study about the user experience processes so in the ux process you have to first start by begin by defining the problem you are seeking to solve which is defining the scope of your problem so with the team members and the stakeholders from several departments the project's aim and scope are first defined during the ux design process typically this phase involves the representatives from the department of the following which can be business design product and a technical the goal of the initial design phase is to pinpoint the issue that new feature or product must address the project scope plan deliverables and delivery date will also be described by the product team the next step is for whom you are attempting to find a solution for then you have to define that statement moving ahead you have to also hear from the company professional who have adopted the particular methodology then you have to create and test a product concept after testing the product concept you have to write a user story that explains how you have solved their problem then you have to make a screen flow diagram representing how you have solved the problem and also representing the user story of your 
problem solving. Moving ahead, we have to make a working prototype. Then you have to put the prototype to test. Then finally, you have to return to step five, which is write a user story and solve the problem. And repeat those processes such that your UX process will be completed. So you can see fundamentally, there are nine steps involved in the UX processes. So let me give you an example. Suppose you will begin by identifying the problem you are seeking to solve. Suppose you have a pandemic and because of private coaching must be done online. So you can see here is your problem statement. Moving ahead, for whom you are attempting to find a solution for? Basically for students and tutors. Then third is you have to create and test a product concept such as system for managing learning, teachers can give content and students can access it over the internet. The fourth step says that you have to write a user story that explains how you solve their problem. Such as, as a student, I want to master tough subjects at home in order to get a decent grade. Then you have to make a screen flow diagram which says that looking for a private tutor. So basically in the UX process, you have to empathize, define the problem, ideate, prototype and test. In the technical terms, you can sum up the UX process something like this. Let's discuss one by one. If I talk about the empathize, it generally means that empathy helps us to comprehend what our users, hopes, fears, capabilities and limitations, justification and ambitions in addition to their current problems are. It enables us to go deeply into our comprehension of user and develop solution that will not only meet a demand but also significantly enhance the life of our users by removing any needless suffering or fiction. A more effective way to demonstrate empathy is to use a screen reader while wearing blinders to perform a job on your own website. So you can see certain questions can be asked like who are our users and what do they need? What is the purpose and what does the product serve for the users? What are the business goals in creating this product? What currently exists to serve the same purpose? So these are questions comprises of what is empathizing. The next thing is defining. Before the product team actually starts working on anything, one of the most crucial stages of UX design is completed. A product's context of existence must be understood before it can be built. The basis for the finished product is laid during the product definition phase. In this stage, stakeholders and UX designers collaborate to develop the product's highest level, essentially its concept. So basically, in the defining the problem, you have empathy mapping, reflecting four key traits that the user is demonstrated or possessed during an observation stage. And second comes a problem statement. And finally, the third statement says that, how might we question these things? So basically, that means that what is your problem and how you are defining it. So now, let me give you an example of the problem statement. Suppose the boarding protocols used by the Garuda Airlines should aim to get each flight's passengers abroad the plane quickly and efficiently so that the plane could take off as soon as possible. So this is an example of the problem statement. Now, we will go on ideating the user experiences. Now, what does the ideating means? So basically, before the product team actually starts working on anything, one of the most crucial stages of UX design is completed. A product's context of existence must be understood before it can be built. The basis for the finished product is laid during the product definition phase. In this, stakeholders and UX designers collaborate to develop the product's highest level, especially its concept. Designers can begin the ideation process if they have a solid understanding of their user, the market and competitive landscape. Designers iterate quickly on many concepts by using paper and a pen during the first ideation phase. Now, the next process after ideating is prototyping. Drawings of user interfaces made by hand, prototypes made on paper are basically referred to as prototypes. Using basic lines, forms, wireframes and digital copies of paper are referred to as prototypes. These are the rudimentary prototypes 
or the digital prototypes that evaluate user flows and information architectures using the wireframes. So you can see a wireframe here of Facebook which is considered as a prototype. So you can see here is a profile, here is search icon, then here you can post, where is a photo or video, then here is Jane Doe. So here is Jane Doe, where some photo is present of Jane Doe. Here you can see certain icons on this tab, where news feed, messages, event and photos. Then there is home. So these basically include the prototype which we are going to build. And finally, after creating a prototype, it's a real time to do the testing. One of the best method to refine experience is to involve a real user and gather its feedback. Start with a simple low fidelity prototype and refine your visual design as you iterate your ideas. It is very crucial to remember that even though user testing is a fifth stage of the UX design process, design teams often run numerous tests to confirm concepts and hypotheses. Internal testing with team members or sharing concepts and prototypes with the stakeholders for input are the two examples of testing. That was all for today's session. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in UI UX design, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification in UI UX design strategy. It is taught by IIT Guwahati professors and industry experts with more than 10 years of experience. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job. Now let's continue with the session.